Hello and welcome to round two coverage on Jomez Pro. We are at the United States Disc Golf Championship 2019 edition, Rock Hill, South Carolina on the Winthrop Arena course. And you've got Big Sexy with you, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. First off, we got to thank our Jomez Pro Patreon supporters for bringing this coverage. Without them, we are not watching disc golf today. We're definitely not watching Chase Card. We've got some great action to watch here today. Technically, you and I would probably be watching some disc golf, but they would not be. So we got to thank those who have stepped up to support it. Here is Paul. We're going to check in with what we saw yesterday. Hole 12. The approach shot comes up short from the drop zone. And this is like the beginning of the nightmare. Air ball putt from Circle's Edge. Oh, my gosh. Rolling out. And another air ball. That for quad. That. For the nine. For the nine. And we don't think, I don't think we've ever covered a nine before. And today it's a birdie from outside the circle. So that'll save you some strokes. That's six strokes off the, <laughs> that's six strokes right off the top. Usually if you can reduce the score by one third, you're doing pretty good. Yeah. And he's smiling today. We check in on round one results. Our leader, Chris Clemens, Simon Lazat, Drew Gibson, Nathan Queen, all tied. Our card today, myself, Eagle McMahon, Kelvin Heimberg, Cam Colglazer, all at minus six. It's hot again, guys, so Absolutely. watch out. We got, I think, 98 degrees. We kind of warned you about that last time. Probably the hottest day in USDGC history. I mean, you're a Charlotte local. Yeah. October, this is rare. Oh, this is the time of year for us to be outside and wearing, like, even pants and long sleeves in the morning. By the afternoon, maybe you take it off and shedding, but... First week in October is always beautiful down here. So. I'm sweating already. You can see it. I'm worried. And I'm I'm out there. Tied fifth, minus six. 100% on C1 putts, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> Eagle also, minus six, getting those glasses. Those are actually prescription. And save those for the beach hole because it gets bright down there. Those are prescription. They serve, they serve a dual purpose. Calvin Sid the Sloth Heimberg up here and tied for fifth, six under. Pretty good circle one percentages. Only one miss in round one. And... Cam Colglaze are also rocking the gra glasses. Those do not look like prescription. Mm -mm. Just looks like a cool guy. Hole one, 389. You know it. Going downhill. Obi wrapping the basket on all sides. The only safe area in the woods is short right. So players are going to go straight putter or mid right at it or swing that forehand out to the left and try to catch the green without skipping past those stakes you can see on the right side of the screen. That little fence in the area left of the, uh, in the hazard area is a, like a sinkhole. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they have the fence up there. I think it should just be survival of the fittest. Don't go in the sinkhole if you want to keep moving around. My personal opinion. Hole one is the second easiest hole in the course, averaging 2.75. Not many holes averaging below par at the Winthrop Arena course. This is one you feel like you got to get, even though there's a lot of nerves on that first tee. Mm-hmm. This is a little bit early in that release. You really want to get that thing out there flat, maybe even a bit of Anheuser. Oh, my gosh. And a rocket skip towards the hazard. That's going to be a tricky putt. Yeah, that's out of bounds, and it's in the woods. And like we said, with hazard, you got to play it where it lies. So I'm going to have to crawl back in there and see what, see what snakes await me. Eagle going with the flex play, trying to get a little more left, but there's a bit of a wind coming across the fairway, and it's taken him as well. Oh, and has he also gone in the hazard? Yeah. And that that play, you really have to hang that thing out there wide left. <laughs> Calvin Heimberg, player obviously you are familiar with by this point. Don't know if he's ever been on Legion... Uh, U.S. Did you see the lead card before, though? Well, this is Chase card, keep in mind. Uh, I'm just making a point. Yeah, true. I don't know that either. <laughs> this just feels like it's lead card. Look at this grouping. I know it. We feel like champions, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're only a couple strokes behind the leader. Chris Clemens at eight under par. And here's Cam from Alabama. And surely you've seen him play as well. If you haven't, one of the most textbook backhand forms you're ever going to witness in the sport. The guy is just clean and smooth, and look at that disc just continuously drifting to the right. Needs to slow down a bit. Oh, and he has also found the long hazard area. Three players in the hazard. Calvin is safe, but obviously not in a good position. He's just going to lay that up. Going to a knee here.
Got to go with the spin putt, and that is what I call Papa Nate. When Nate starts making spin putts. <laughs> Let's see one more time. A little bit of Anheuser. I made this. I ran over to the Jomez guys and said, hey, I'm a content creator. I got a slow mess for you. <laughs> Look at that. You couldn't wait to get out of the low ceiling brush as you run out of there. And Eagle, you can see the awkward lies in there. Can he also manufacture the par? Wow. Oh, a good great effort. effort. Yeah, that was right on line, just a bit low. Cameron from about 35 feet to save par. And he as well is just off the top of the cage. Going to have two bogeys and two pars on the first hole. Not the score you're looking for, especially from this group here. And one of the few holes, like I said before, that averages below par on this Winter Arena course. Yeah, two bogeys. We had a funny moment <laughs> at, just on the tee as like uh, one of the PDGA guys came out and was like, Hey, fans, you know, I want you to stay behind the players. We're going to have a great time. We're going to see some great shots. We're going to see some out of bounds. And we were like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> but he was right. We went three, three out of bounds right on the first hole. So I guess he knew what he was talking about. Hole two, par four, 444. You want that long, straight, low shot to get you past the Mando so that you can play that forehand skipper around the corner and find this green. And one of the classic holes in this course. It's seen different variations, but this tee has been here for a really long time. I think, I don't know if it's one of the original holes or not, but as long as I've been playing this event, going back to 2008, it has been here. And this is an orc? No, oh, this is looking ideal. Oh, yeah. And that is past that little bunker edge. You really can't be in a better spot. It's one of the best drives I've ever had on mm -hmm. the hole as far as how the ease of that upshot. Mm-hmm. Calvin looks like he's lining up the wide forehand, and he's kind of grounded it, but with, got a great skip. Don't know if he's going to be long enough to have a good access to the pin from there, but that was a, a generous skip that he yeah. got. If you have to be a little short of the Mando, you might as well be really far away. It gives you more room to kind of swing that skip shot, I feel. And Eagle with the... Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah. Like, when he releases that, I'm like, ooh, boy, is it short? But he just has so much forward energy, even with that super hyzer wow. angle. He just gets that super long skip. Yeah. When when most of your forehand players throw that release, it is coming up yeah. of right about there, which yeah. is not the greatest place to be because it's, it's a really tricky angle to get around that mandatory back to the pin. Yeah. Eagle just skips another 70 feet, and he's got— He's in the garden spot. He can almost putt Anheuser to the pin from there. And here's Calvin. Low shot. Oh, I like this. Big skip. I like that. That's a good shot from that from, yeah. from that spot. Just that, outside the circle, a little obstructed, but mm -hmm. he's going to be happy with that. Yeah, that's good work there. Cam just kind of even with the Mando has to make something happen here. Yeah. Those are both nice shots. And, and this is what you see a lot. This. Can it sit down? Oh, yeah. You see that so often with that hyzer with the overstable disc on that green. It starts rolling. You're thinking, is it going to stop? Yeah. But not that much speed and just sits down about 10 feet away. I'm going Firebird. Making easy work there. And, and with Eagle coming up here with his the best drive I think I've ever seen on the hole, we're going to have four looks for birdie on the second hole. Like how do you... <laughs> You do not practice this shot, folks. I mean, no. maybe Eagle is, but had either one of us been there, it we would have kind of had to get creative because that's not a shot. You don't practice getting that close. No. Oh. Birdie, look, just off the top. I often think about, you know, for me, a forehand as short as Eagle just threw is kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about how far Eagle can throw, mm -hmm. and a lot of these guys, <laughs> yeah. it starts to become like, man, like, is a 100-foot shot, you know, is that kind of weird if you can throw 700? Yeah. You know, because I don't I'll never know what that's like. But I feel like choking up that to that small a percentage of your power mm -hmm. can sometimes be a little bit of an awkward thing. I think it's the separation of a great player and just your average local good player yeah you know like a, a great player like eagle has the touch yes ranging from those short 100 foot for sure semi Cle approaches. clearly he's proven he can do it but mm -hmm. yeah just a just a funny feeling sometimes when you have to throw that 
overstable, but so soft. Mm -hmm. Three birdies, just the one par. Calvin almost came through there from the tricky lie. Hole three, par four, 738 feet. We're playing the B positions today. There's only three holes where it makes a difference. This is one of them. So we're going to play the basket on the left, the less treacherous of the two positions because it's not near a sand trap. So there's no hazard area. The golf green is inbounds. So you've just got to throw a very long drive and try to set up a spot where you can go through that Mando in two and get yourself a putt. I'm just looking at the the T sign here, and it says that the pin A is 759, whereas the pin B is 738. And I'm trying to think how the pin A, which is closer, is somehow tw 21 yeah, feet further. Not sure how that was measured. I'm I'm going with a sidewinder, and I did not oh, throw this well at all. That curled super far right and early. I wanted to put more cut. I th I think I was just a little too excited. I ripped it honestly too hard for what the sidewinder was capable of. Um, and in practice, handling. you were going with a. Thunderbird, were you just worried about going too far? I was. I wanted yeah. to be right more so that I could throw a forehand through the Mandos oh, rather wow. than uh, left. And this is cooking. This could make the Mando in one. Like yeah. this is. Oh my gosh. Look at this thing go. Get through there. <laughs> no, those aren't the Mando trees. He's gone long and <laughs> missed the mandatory oh in one God. shot. But honestly, he said that's part of his game plan yeah. because the drop zone is very forgiving. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he's missed the Mando, but he's going to have an easy layup, yep. par guaranteed. Yeah, he's going to even have like a 80-foot look for it. Yeah, he could run it if he wanted to. For the birdie. And this is a nice big drive, turning. Mm -hmm. You want that little bit of flex back to get you some forward carry. Yep. That's well done. And Calvin, one of the premier power players we have. Trying to squint the sun away as it is bright and it is hot, folks. It feels like... July slash August. And that is just arm speed for you. He just rips through that, turns it the whole way. That's big distance. And this is kind of an awkward space to, to land in because you have to be so specific with the touch here. You don't have to be in the exact spot. You just want to give yourself an angle to throw your approach. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, being so far away from the mandatory is... You can overshoot that and find yourself in a really awkward place. Definitely. This is just a beautiful shot from Cam oh with my the putter. Wow. That's exactly what I'm talking about there with Cameron's form. It just is so smooth and effortless. And he that's a scary shot for any player. Mm -hmm. And he made that look so simple. Calvin with the forehand. A little bit overstable, but checking up nicely right there. By the bullseye, that'll be less than 15 feet away for the birdie. You're going with your star rat, I see. Yeah, I got the rat going. I didn't want a big skip. It wasn't that far of a shot. Just a simple little hyzer play off the short grass. Slide up about 15 feet away as well. Now we're going to see Eagle from that drop spot. Really not the worst thing. You no. know, I mean, I'm sure he wants to get a birdie, but... There's a lot of situations if that roller stays cut a little bit or maybe it flips a little earlier, he could he could conceivably make the Mando in one, which would just be fantastic to watch. I mean, that was a 700-foot roller we just saw. Witnessed, it was. Right? It was. I mean, it says this whole 759 or 738, depending yeah. on yeah. how you're measuring Great it. Great birdie from Cam. But uh, how far away was that disc when it actually finished rolling? I got to say, like, between 80 and 100 feet from the pin, but, yeah. like, long of the pin. <laughs> Insane. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'll take a par. Calvin has this left for a great birdie after the big drive. Now, the color of the disc got, made me think it was a big germ Thunderbird, which is something that, that uh, Calvin throws a lot. But mm. I, the way that it turned, it seemed like maybe a destroyer. Maybe it was one of the Calvin Heimberg destroyers. It was like a dark purple, his drive. Yeah. I, I don't think it was. a. It didn't. It would look too dark it to be a Thunderbird. I think okay. he probably was going distance driver, but I'm not sure. A whole four, par three, 299. This is the Mando one. You've got first double Mando right here. You got to get through that. And then you got to think about, are you going to be so aggressive that you try to shoot this gap and make it through the next Mandos? Or are you going to play the layup and then putt through to try to make your three? Coming in at the second most difficult hole on the course, and it's just 299 feet. Cam through the Mando. Good kick there, I think, to go to the middle rather than out there into the sun. You don't really like that left side much uh, for your chances to make it through the last Mando in two. 
Calvin is going for this mid-range, perfect straight shot and oh, slides yeah. it through the mandatories. Great throw. I'm going with the rat again here. And this is just to make the first set and to stay somewhat off to the right for another forehand through. Mm -hmm. Are there good lanes all the way that far right? Good-ish. Good-ish, yeah. And Eagle looks like he's just trying to make that first gap and then maybe jump putt through the second. Yeah, if you make it far enough forward on that left side, you're all right. If you're short and left, it's pretty nasty. Obviously, the middle, ideal. Great second, shot. Second hardest hole, hole four. Third hardest hole, hole 17. The two shortest holes in the course by quite a bit. Yeah, it's those all those penalties to be had. And that's uh, leaving a little bit of meat on the bone there for the par. Yeah, that got away from me just a little bit, probably out to about 30 feet. Eagle just putting through but giving it a run as well. That was no layup for Eagle, who has also left himself a challenging 32-footer. Calvin for birdie. Yeah, and that is one of only seven on the day. Wow. Bringing us to 13 for the event. And if I want to get to my 38 number for birdies for the weekend, we're really going to have to start picking up our performance wow. from the entire field. Yeah, really in a huge way. Yeah, right. myself included. I'm, I've got two threes on it, so and I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. We need your help. I'm going to try, buddy. Eagle for par, really well done from there. Wow, 13 birdies total. 114 in second round, 116 first round play count. Wow. That's uh, pretty crazy. Good par. Coverage made possible by our supporters on Patreon. We can't say it enough. That is the main funding source for what we're doing. Wearing those stupid glasses for the 100K party is so much fun. <laughs> I can't imagine what you're going to have us trying try to have us wear a 200K party. It's, it's a 250. Be, that's coming oh, soon. Oh, yeah. Let's 250K yeah, let's party. Go. No party for 200. Come on. <laughs> hole five, par five, 10, 25. Along the water the whole way, most players going to play a right finishing shot off the tee, whether it be turnover backhand, backhand roller, or big forehand. Then you play an approach shot to the landing zone. Closer to the water, the better and then play across because of the mandatory. You're forced to go over the water on hopefully the third. Disc golf is well known as being one of the best natural sports, I think. I think that's what makes this sport so great. You guys all know that you're, that are watching who've played. This hole is perfect. I mean, we do have the introduction of the road that can come and play with an errant forehand, but mm -hmm. for the most part, this is just all natural, and it's like the perfect disc golf hole. Yeah. The scoring even shows that. 37% birdie, 32% par, 31% bogey and above. I mean, the spread's there, the yeah. fun's there, the challenge is there. And it's just that it feels special when you play this hole, and it has for the last 21 years. It's a beauty. This is going to hang out pretty far right, but you should be fine. Oh, look at that. little stump action and rolling back down the fairway. Okay. So now you see why you got there. I was thinking that was, it's probably a little right. And then I got up there and I was like, oh no, it's perfect. Huh. <laughs> yeah. It was exactly where it should have been in the end. You go with the big hyzer here. This is lifting. Oh, this needs to get down. And Eagle has crossed the road and there's that errant forehand. That is a big mistake. Eagle's forehand is so powerful and to, to hang it out tight is a, uh, that's a huge mistake. Yeah, he's part. got to go at the water there and trust that angle. Mm -hmm. He could get way down the fairway. He did still get way down the fairway, but he's OB. Perfect shot. That that shot from Cam was fantastic. Yeah, to throw a flat mm -hmm. shot and then just finishing so gently to the water. He makes a lot of things that look like they're, they should be easy that aren't easy. Yeah, he makes it look easy. He makes it look easy. And and Calvin does the same there. His angle was a little bit easier than than. Cameron's though. And look at Eagle. Stand still. Boom. Eyes are forehand of 400 probably. Simon Lazat says this guy has the best forehand in the world. And believe it or not, 
I'm having a hard time making an argument against it right I now. I mean, biggest. He's got the technical touch. He's got a lot of too. touch too. He's got a lot of touch too. I don't say I don't think that he has the angles the way that some other people do. Yeah. <clears throat> you. <clears throat> He's got an incredible forehand, I'll say that. Yeah, it's de- it's definitely up there and I think he cracks into the top 5 all time if he keeps this up. Mm-hmm. Which is the coveted top 5 sidearm list that we've talked about many times. <laughs> <laughs> And look at that, kind of showing you. Wow. <laughs> showing why right there. Come I thought on. that that had hit the basket. You can see me over there like, did you just hit the basket? Because I couldn't quite see. I was behind the bushes just hiding in the shade, as yeah. most of us are doing on every chance we mm-hmm. get. We're just running for the shade. I'm going, I went X-Cal, X-Cal, and now more overstable X-Cal for the last shot. And this is going to be a nice, safe shot, but... A good anti-skip to 25 feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought you would have been drifting out to the 35 to 40 range. Yeah, it did a nice forward skip. And that is a good result. And Cam going out here wide. Is that going to hyzer enough? Yeah, that's going to be right there in his putting range. Mm-hmm. Not a bad shot. Playing that safe side. And now Calvin. Perhaps a rock three. Just so pretty. Coming up a bit short, but across. Everyone's across safely. Cam for birdie. Yeah, count that. Nice outside the circle connection. One more look. I know you like them floods. I do like fluts, and I, I I like putting. I like big putts on this hole because this is the probably the most exposed mm -hmm. open hole on the course as far as trees to the green. There's nothing out here for any sort of like that. There's something about putting in the woods where you kind of feel. Calvin also outside the circle drills it. The, those trees just provide a little bit of protection. It gives you something to like mm -hmm. judge the distance better. And when it's this open, it can be difficult. But these guys capitalizing on their opportunities and you as well you're so close to that forehand there's a big birdie there and eagle has just that for his par after the out of bounds drive which is a great save and speaking of eagle we got to give a big shout out to my buddy from north carolina philip bartholomew throwing it in from outside 375 maybe upwards of 400 feet for the only three in the weekend so far and as far as I'm concerned, I think it's the second three ever from that pin placement. Phil so, Bart. Huge shout out to wow. Phil Bart. That's awesome. Hole six, par three, the beach, 371. You see the OB on the right side and deep. Obviously the water also OB. If you do go OB, it's time to play from the drop spot, 45 footer looking directly at the water. A Little bit of headwind creeping up on us at this moment. And I believe Calvin is going with a champion eagle. He loves those eagles so much, and this is just... Never a doubt. Yeah, never a doubt. I mean, that is such a Calvin Heimberg-type shot. Mm -hmm. He is so good at those tight line down the middle shots that you see so often in Florida where he sharpened his game. Yeah, Florida has a lot of low-ceiling golf, I feel mm -hmm. like. And he, you know, that's where he came up. He's fantastic at that low, committed, flat to finish. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you need on this hole. That'd be real. Oh, Kim, to... this is pretty wide, but look at the skips. <laughs> oh, gosh. Over stable Mabel. And he hated it out of his hand because he wasn't sure of the angle Somehow the nose got lifted up just in time to get that big skip, and he's inside the circle. I'm going with Metal Flake Thunderbird. And that as well is looking so nice. Just needs to get a little bit of skip and slide. Okay. Yeah. You're still happy with that, mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm happy. And I've heard Legend. Yeah. But I haven't seen it yet. Eagle going over the water. Oh, this is too tight. This is too tight. This is going to drop in the water. Yeah, and I've heard about this too, and I was excited to see Eagle throw this and just did not commit to the width that he needed. And from the drop zone, mm. has it gone out of bounds again? No. Okay. Oh, 
Ooh, just creeping into the basket. And just like that, Nate Sexton, you are three under par through six holes. Yeah, feeling good. This was a nice catch from the basket. He helped me out. Mm -hmm. It's a little low left. I wasn't sure it was in. The basket's scared. You can see it shaking there. Happy to have it. And these guys in the sand. This is such an intimidating hole, I feel like. When you get that drive in the sand. Yeah, you're feeling You're good feeling now. so good. Mm-hmm. Walking down the fairway like, oh, right. This is going to be so easy. Yeah. <laughs> Birdie on this hole really sets the tone. Yeah, this is like the sand that kind of like marks the point where you can start feeling a little relieved. You're mm-hmm. like, okay, I don't have to worry about my putt. No, not, I'm not in the too sand. much. Yeah. I will say I definitely have missed a putt in the sand for a birdie before. I'm sure most of us have. You've been out here. I think this is my 13th season at the USDGC. Yeah, you, so you give yourself enough I've opportunities. I've taken quite a few putts. Absolutely. Hole 7, par 3, 284. This is the triple mandatory. you got to go under and between through the hole in the bamboo fence or else you're going to one of two drop spots and you're getting a four. I mean, unless you throw a hero shot, you're making a four from those spots. So it's all about just keeping it low, keeping it straight. Backhand mid-range, forehand driver. Those are the main options that you see people go with. This maybe even is a putter. Oh, Calvin is yanked on this, and this needs to get down. It has not. Calvin will be going to one of those two drop spots. Just a little bit of a late release. Mm-hmm. And Cam, this is going to keep flipping up, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right through the gate. Through, slides to a stop. Great so shot. beautiful. Yep. Hole 15, averaging 2.91. The fourth easiest. Going for the upper 90s, but just splitting it right down the middle instead. Perfect distance control. Eagle with a little bit more of a wide hyzer play. But he gets through just the same. And this is like one of those holes where I like I want to throw it straight at the pin mm. because it just seems like that's the way to play this hole. But you're playing it just to hit the gap and 20 feet straight on or 20 feet right, it's the same thing. You're still 20 feet away. Yeah. We saw Calvin lay up. My birdie putt is in. The heat is on, literally and... Score-wise, Nate Sexton, four under par. Calvin Heimberg is going to drop down a stroke. He was at four under par. It's a great start as well, but he'll go down to three. Cam at four. Cameron, just the one par in hole four, one of the hardest holes in the course, and the unfortunate bogey on one. But other than that, mm-hmm. he as well is heating up in this October heat. Eagle at even thus far. On to hole eight, par four, 697 feet. OB on the left side. You're going to see the stakes here. Just that one little area, probably 150 foot strip of out of bounds there. Everything else is safe unless you're across either of the fences, the baseball fence or the fence that delineates that wetland creek area. Players are going to try to keep the drive as kind of as long and low as they can, moving a bit left or with the forehand, just staying close to that OB on the left side is preferable because it sets up a little bit better angle. Cam's trying to do just that, but this might be a yeah. little too high. This is going to drift out of bounds unless it hits something hard. Yeah, that's out of bounds. One of the situations where you wish you'd hit the stake, and he was so close right there, actually. He was. Almost got a very favorable result, but he'll be throwing his third from still a pretty good spot. Should be able to give himself a good look to potentially save that par. Mm -hmm. My drive is very short. Yeah. Uh, It's safe, but it didn't, I didn't commit to it the way I intended to. It's going to have to be a very big second shot to get anywhere near the pin. And Eagle's just going about 22% power and going about 70 feet past where you landed. Yep. Yep. (laughs) That's why his forehand is so strong. He can just put Zero effort and have it still go 350 accurately. And Calvin also a little short and inside as this thing gets overstable in a hurry. And Calvin, we've seen quite a few forehands from him thus far in the round. Not a guy that I think is going to go with a forehand heavy. It's mm-hmm. not that he doesn't have that tool. He does, obviously. But, um, yeah, a little surprising to see him do it so much this 
this early, but this course does ask for it over and over and over again. Mm. I, I heard it hit mm-hmm. something. I, I was hoping that it could have skipped by. I think it had the distance. It was a nice committed throw, but not quite. That's a cool die or something. Got that on top pepperoni of pizza going. Is that what that was? It looked like it. I thought it was a maze or something. And look at this result. Calvin getting through up by the stump. Yeah. Not many shots are getting through that bush there. That is a very well-protected area of the fairway. But he'll have a putt through the mozzarella sticks. Shout out to Arby's for the tweet yesterday. If you didn't see that, go on social media. On Instagram, correct? Or Instagram, did they tweet yeah. as well? Yeah, I don't know what, where it was, but it was on the social medias. Mm. Pretty cool to see Arby hashtagging yeah. mozzarella sticks in the, with the disc golf basket. It's very cool. Cam from the out of bounds. Skips oh, past yeah. and rolls back down, but that's a putt, and he's not going to have anything oh, in his way. Okay, yeah, rolling quite a bit, but still right outside the circle. Mm-hmm. He's got a good look for the birdie. Eagle got a bad roll. He's quite a ways away here. Can I just lay that up? Yep, smart play on the back side of the pin. I'm going to a dart. Oh, and you made that putt in round one, correct? Yeah, from a little more, from this perspective, a little more right, like directly over the stump. I did hit a yeah. big 60-footer here. I was trying to repeat that, get a little of that magic again as Calvin yeah. hits the line but just comes up low. And with a good roll, Cam unable to capitalize on the result, not having to worry about any Italian appetizers in the way. It looks like we're going to have a bogey and three pars on hole eight. Mm-hmm. So we see Calvin drop that in. Time for our U-Disc leaderboard check-in. Chris yeah. Clemens staying hot. Holding it down. under through eight, moving to 12. Nathan Queen, Nathan Sexton at minus 10. Mm-hmm. Calvin and Cam at minus nine. And we have a tweet for our lucky duck of the day. James Conrad winning this tournament from Chase Card by hitting an ace on hole 17. That's the his prediction. He's yeah. won himself 100 bucks on jomasbro.com slash Patreon. Congratulations. And we're looking at these uh, scores coming up here in a second. And, and it's, it, it's, it's tight. It's showing that the scores are super tight. They're also maybe not quite as low as we've seen in the past. I think that's the arena course, the new layout. I mm-hmm. think, you know, plus the heat. Conditions difficult. I know you were a broken record about the heat, and I got mm-hmm. to see these comments. Oh, in Texas, it's so hot. You wouldn't even know. Try it at the U.S. Championship, though. There I mean, is, you know, you're out there at Sunday dubs. You're not, you're not bothering me. And starting this stretch from 9 to about hole 14, we are going to be in the sun the whole time. There is no reprieve. This sh- the shadows... From the trees, we're going to be heading out any chance we hit. I mean, it is just going to be all open, all sun. And if you don't have an umbrella, good luck to you, my friend. Yeah, my caddy did a great job holding that umbrella. And he was always just running around me. He knew where the sun was. It was really helpful. Hole nine, I'm going lima bean with my Excalibur here. Got to get this thing straight and turned. And that's a good tee shot. As long as it doesn't skip too much, and you are in the zone, my friend. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Just need to see it flat out of the hand. And Eagle going to go for a similar shot, just bigger. And righter. That needs to get down. Longer. Oh, wow. That is and so safe. That is so large, and it just, as far right as it looked like it was going, Mm -hmm. I thought it might have a big skip, but not really a big skip, and that's in a great place. This is a little bit left. Calvin is in danger of skipping left out. Short as well. Mm. Did it catch any of the foliage on that back tree? Maybe a bit. Cam going a little bit more turnover. That's what you're looking for. 
As long as he chose the right disc and doesn't go too long, which he has, unfortunately. Man. And that's the part of that hole that I really dislike. I feel like that shot should be rewarded. It was a beautiful shot out of his hand. Calvin from the drop zone, super wide. And this is where it gets really scary, folks. This green is so tight behind the pin. Calvin has got it inbound, so he will be putting for, for par, I believe, as we're waiting for Tom, a former Golden Rake winner here at the USCGC, making his way over and holding up the green there flag. There it is. <laughs> Cam, also from the drop zone, trying to make an adjustment off of Calvin's line, and he yeah. does that. But this is in danger of perhaps going too left if it's not overstable enough, but a soft check onto the green. That is going to be a scary putt as well for that par. And this right here is to get to five under and 11 under for the tournament. Five under front nine is just that smoking hot number. And this is looking pretty good. Just, oh, wow. Really didn't get much forward skip once it got to the green. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, six inches outside the circle. Okay. And Eagle just going with a putter, of course, from that ridiculously large forehand drive. And Perfect. he's inside the bullseye. That's going to be a tap in birdie for Eagle, who will move to just one under on the front nine. Been a slow start for him. Hmm. Just left. And Cam is kind of playing that I don't really want to get any parts today game right now. And you are going to have to stay at four under just a bit high left, just like Cameron's. Calvin to save a par. And he's in. Good par save from the back. That drop zone can be so scary. It's one of the reasons why you see some of these really big numbers on hole nine. Seven, I was amongst the group of sixes and there's a ton of fives. Excuse me. I was looking at hole eight. <laughs> there are nines, eights, sevens. I was a bunch of the sixes. That was the hardest hole on the course, averaging 4.47. Not a surprise either with all that out of bounds. Thank you guys again for your support on Patreon. I know we say it a lot, but we really do mean it. It's super important to what we're trying to do here as we see some great shaking ducks. That could be our lucky duck of the day there. I'm not sure. Getting into that water. I, I kind of, I'm a little <laughs> jealous with the heat we've had that he gets to swim around. In. Oh man, this looks like Miami Vice right here with that orange in the water. It's just like, just let me jump in the lake. You get kicked off the premises and kicked out of the tournament if you do so, but I'm thinking about doing it today because it's going to be another hot one in round three. Back nine coming to you right now.